The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Today we hear about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who protects and cares for us just as a shepherd does his sheep. John provides an image of the Good Shepherd that combines loving intimacy with unflinching courage. Jesus not only calls his own by name, but is also a protective gate. The devoted shepherd lies down to sleep each night across the sheepfold's opening. He uses his own body to keep straying sheep in and predators out. He literally lays down his life for his sheep. While I do find shepherding metaphors fascinating and could go on and on, today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. We're halfway through the highest holy season, a season that we celebrate longer than any other. We need to look at these readings in light of the resurrection. Christ is risen, alleluia, and the resurrection changes everything. Jesus hung around for 40 days after his resurrection simply to make that very point with his disciples. We've been together for three years. You've seen and heard a lot. Look at me now. Do you understand? And what about us? We've known about the resurrection for centuries. Do we really understand that out of immense love, God became like us, took our sins, that is, took everything that separates us from an intimate union with God to the cross? Like a shepherd, he laid down his life for us. And he rose again to defeat death itself. Now, doesn't that excite you? Don't you want to just shout hallelujah? Which means praise God. So that's the context. It's the context every time we open the Gospels, but especially during this Easter season. Jesus laid down his life so that we could live. And I mean really live, not simply to exist, but to have life and have it more abundantly. The life Jesus offers is no ordinary life. As the psalmist says, the good shepherd leads us to a worry-free life of peace and tranquility, goodness and kindness, a life in which we want for absolutely nothing. This life is the promise of the resurrection and the basis for our hope. But how do we get this life that we desire so much? Jesus said, 
we enter through the sheep gate and follow the good shepherd. Jesus desires us to be with him and is calling each of you by name. You see, everything about Jesus, from the incarnation to the resurrection, is about relationship. A loving, intimate, personal relationship. Jesus knows his sheep and calls us by name. Now Jesus may be the Lord and Savior of all of heaven and all of earth, of all the living and the dead, but we are not just one anonymous drop in the sea of humanity. Jesus knows each and every one of us as a unique and beautiful soul, precious in his sight. His love is available to all and is given to us, given to you individually by name. He knows you better than you know yourself. Scripture says he has counted every hair on your head. Now, how many of you have that kind of self-knowledge? More importantly, Jesus knows all that you are, all that you think and feel, all that you've done, and all that you will become. Jesus smiles when you are happy and consoles you when you are sad. And we know how important this is. One of the most fundamental human desires is to be known and appreciated for who we are. Teachers are taught that with regard to their success of their students, and even banks get it when they advertise that customers are more than their account numbers. But Jesus is the epitome of what it means to know you, and in knowing, to love you overwhelmingly and unconditionally. He lived it during his public life, but his death and resurrection showed the amazing depth of that love. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Now, as we savor the comfort of being really and truly known by the Good Shepherd, we need to consider how well we know him. And Jesus offers one criterion, to recognize the shepherd's voice. I think we all understand that the ability to recognize someone's voice does indicate a certain knowledge about that person. We can see that with people that do impressions for a living. For the impression to be recognized, the sound of the voice must be right. But more important, the words and the mannerisms need to match what we know about that person. It was the words and mannerisms that made Jesus recognizable after his resurrection. Even the people that knew Jesus best didn't immediately know who he was until he did or said something that was true to what they knew about him. They recognized his voice. And if we think about the people we know best, our idea of what it means to recognize gets expanded. Not only can we tell who the person is that's speaking, but we can hear mood and meaning that transcends the words. Now that makes sense when we're thinking about a spouse, a parent, or a best friend, but many of us struggle with the idea of hearing and recognizing the voice of Jesus, though we know he is always with us and always speaking. His voice may come to us in many varied ways, like through the heart of prayer or the consolation of a friend, but we can only recognize it if we've been spending time with him in relationship, as we would a spouse, a parent, or a best friend. A woman once told me that she leaves quiet time in her prayer to listen to whatever Jesus has to say. And often what happens in that silence is just her own words and concerns swirling around in her head. But every once in a while, she knows that Jesus is speaking to her because, as she says, there's an unexplainable clarity, not in any audible way, but in the truth of what she is hearing, a truth that she, that's consistent with the Jesus that she knows. Before we can recognize the shepherd's voice, we first must hear it, and that itself could sometimes be a challenge. When I'm talking with parents preparing for their child's baptism, 
I often use a series of statements to stimulate conversation. And for example, it's harder to raise a child today than it was a generation ago. Agree or disagree? And there's always a lot of debate, but one issue usually surfaces, namely that there are far more voices, each professing to be truth, that are competing for your child's attention. The challenge for parents is to have a strong enough relationship with their children so that children know the parental voice of right and wrong and can separate, as Jesus said, truth from robbers and thieves. Now those voices are competing for our attention as well. Is our relationship with the Good Shepherd strong enough for us to weed out the thieves and the robbers, to get beyond the distractions of the day so we can hear and recognize his voice. I know my sheep and mine know me. Our risen Lord, the Good Shepherd, wants you to have an abundant life in relationship with him, to want for nothing, to live joyfully in peace now and for all eternity. Jesus knows you, loves you, and is calling you by name. May you hear his voice and choose to follow him.